and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Talia Lissandra. We're going to be trying out another Talia deck, this time pairing it with Freljord and also with another new champion with Lissandra that makes um, some landmarks for us. We're going to have a lot of landmarks in this deck and that's going to be something that's going to be a um, kind of a problem is that we can only have like the six uh things in play, you know, units or landmarks in play, and we're going to be going wide with them, because Lissandra comes into play and makes a landmark, so you get two bodies there. We'll have landmarks with, like, Preservarium, which will, of course, go away with the countdown, same with Ancient Preparation, so those will help. Frozen Thrall has a countdown of eight, so it's not going to be going away for a while. Um, Sentry will be in there doing some blocking, um, but, you know, Blight Ravine, also a landmark. Draclorn Inquisitor will be there helping out our Frozen Thralls, but also puts an additional landmark into play so that takes up two spaces and then talia summons an exact copy of any of our landmarks so again takes up two spaces we have both of our champions take up two spaces this draclorn inquisitor takes up two spaces we're going to be running out of room but because of that because we're going to have like these landmarks that take up spaces on our board and the landmarks can't attack or block of course we're going to need to be able to um keep our opponent from going wide I think that's something I'm really worried about. So we're going to have a lot of area of effect damage. Blighted Ravine, Avalanche, Ice Shard. So it'll be interesting to try out all of those. Um, I think really what this deck is missing is like a ruination, like a way to like efficiently kill larger units from our opponent. We just don't really have that in here. Could have gone Ice Quake or Spirit Fire. I don't have either of them um, in here, but that's, that's something to think about. Like those are a couple of other cards, but we have like the cheaper area effect damage. Um, but the only the ice shard is fast speed, you know, like like how you can play that during combat. The avalanche and blighter ravine are a little slower. A couple of ride negation for protection. One ancient hourglass for protection. That ancient hourglass can be awesome with Talia if you have the room. Um, couple, so like really against like the large units, that's what I'm worried about with this deck. I, I just I'm playing a couple harsh winds. That's kind of about all we got. Um, and you know we'll see how that does. And then you know one howling abyss. So. We'll see how we do here. Uh, we're gonna, definitely going to be a Frozen Thrall deck. Basically, our game plan is get Frozen Thralls out there, slow the game down with all of these like uh, area of effect damage spells, and then eventually try to get 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelms and win the game with 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelms. So that's kind of that's going to be kind of our game plan. Then you know we have like our, our Talia is also attacking and, and helping out our 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelms. Lissandra, once we get more 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelms, will level up. That's kind of what we got. All right, so here we go. Talia, Lissandra, let's head on over to Ranked, and we'll see how we do with this deck uh, with two new champions and a bunch of landmarks. Azir. All right, playing against some aggro. Hopefully having 12 area of effect removal spells will be good against aggro. Uh, we'll get rid of the hourglass. Do I want to keep the second frozen thrall? I kind of do. But we don't have any of those area effect cards, like any of those 12 cards that I really want. But I kind of want to keep the second Frozen Thrall. Maybe we don't. Yeah, maybe we don't. Okay, good. Found an Avalanche. It's a good start. The Emperor commands. The land obeys. Yeah, Talia and Jarvan are pretty mediocre champions. Yeah, I think that's fair. Talia is definitely a champion that's more difficult to build around and uh you know it's it's really easy just to play azir and play a bunch of aggro stuff and do well with that and then you're like wow azir's azir's good where it's a lot more difficult to build um a talia deck and uh, find like the right combination of interaction and landmarks and everything like that like it's everyone's a garden So there, there's also that aspect to it. Right now, likely the best Talia decks are going to be with Aphelios, but I've been trying to find, trying, trying to, I've been trying to do different stuff and see if, see if there's other things to do with Talia. So I was hoping they were going to play something else, and then I was going to play the Blighted Ravine. That was kind of my goal, my plan last turn. Obviously it went poorly for me with them not doing that. Probably 
probably should have played. I guess I should have just played the Blighted Ravine anyway. I thought they would play like one thing though. But yeah, I guess I should have just played Blighted Ravine. Well, that's not good. So we go to two. If I play the troll chant, we go to four. That's probably worth it. Basically, just playing troll chant to gain two life and heal my Draclorn too. I think keeping them from drawing two cards is a good idea. Even though I'm much closer to dying. Huh. Not exactly sure why they played that. Uh, just to drain me one, I guess. So we heal for four, but we're going to now take that four again. Oh, I guess, oh, because this, no, this will kill the prankster. Okay, no, so we're taking two there. All right, so we're at two. So they find, like, they have to draw, like, the three, two nightfall, but I guess they have to go, like, stalking shadows into it. Probably should have done this first. Yeah, definitely should just play that first. I was fast. I, I wanted to keep the flash freeze available, but I guess I'm not attacking for lethal. All things going cold. All right, cool. So yeah, I didn't play Lissandra for open lethal because I don't I don't know. I was like worried of some like attacker that I wanted to have the flash freeze. And I don't really know what that would be. I don't know if they'd have it. Like, I don't think they would have an elusive. Okay. We got some overwhelm attack in. Whoa, Kitty Dexterity with that resub. Tier 2 sub. Thank you so much there. Um, we'll keep the ancient preparations for sure. This is, like, this is what I'm worried about is, like, the larger things, right? Like, these larger attackers. That's what I'm worried about with our deck. I, we can do good against smaller things. All the small things, but I'm worried about the large things. Let's start with this Thrall going. I think we're going to need that 8-8 ASAP. And now I want the Ancient Preparations to get this 2-2 out as soon as possible. Yeah, I guess so. Take Drakorn. I'll get that 88 out a little faster. Would you look at this place? What do you make of that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure either. Fourteen. Not going the best. What a shame for you. Excuse us. Look, I'll just go the ravine. Show us what you can do. Oh dear. Chase what you want without mercy. Mm. That card's so scary. Get 
So they could have like the, you know, give it plus two plus zero and vulnerable and then I'm kind of dead. All right, cool. They didn't. I mean, I guess I would ancient hourglass at that point, but. Always cool. Down to ten. Definitely need that 8 8 coming. This is the, the attack I'm not sure about. But it's not overwhelming. Gross. Oh. <laughs> I don't like those things. Um, double avalanche? Eh. I can see another troll champ being really useful. Even though they have spell shield to start with. Make that note. So I can go Troll Chant, Troll Chant, Avalanche. That didn't sound like the best idea. So, um, could troll chant, but it, honestly, it's not really like that great of a troll chant. I think I may just let this happen. Might as well Let's get them started. I couldn't have that deal one to everything to get rid of those spell shields. Oh no, I can't copy. Get out of here, T2. Get out of here and don't come back. What? 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 But, but, I should just cast the avalanche first. That's what I should have done instead of attacking. Like the attack was, um, I'm now kind of figuring out that I should not have done the attack because I didn't. Now I don't get the Italian attack. So I should have cast this avalanche first. Yeah, you know, instead of just attack, because I, I attack for the two two. Like the good part about attacking with that two two is we get to kill the three one. That's the good thing. So this has oh this has to be four or less to advance to zero. Not five or less. Who who plays ten four mana ten ten overwhelms? What did, how do we have four mana ten ten overwhelms? Maybe I have enough of those. No, 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 no. Play something, play something, play something. Yes. But now my Draculorn dies. Oh well. I guess Draculorn dying is better than me dying. 
Yeah. Yeah, we needed to draw harsh winds, didn't we? I wish this ride negation ever did like something at some point. Yuck. Alright, that that Renekton was a little rough. Dust yourself off and try again. Alright, back to playing small aggro. I like this more with our, you know, I don't, I don't like facing 10-10 overwhelms. Like that's what, that's the problem with our deck. We don't have vengeance. We don't have ruination. We need like those kind of cards. Maybe, yeah, maybe that means like I'm supposed to play more in tombs. Like these things for in tombs, but that's kind of a problem with our deck. Okay, so this this hand plays a longer game. Let's definitely get rid of you. Let's definitely get rid of you and keep the other two. I can keep one of these two. And I feel like like again like the froze having a frozen thrall is kind of important. Um but maybe not. Maybe we get rid of you also. Cuz we need to be able to turn the corner. And the frozen thrall helps to to do that. Keep that. I like turn one frozen thrall. See what we see. So we'll have turn three avalanche, and then then we'll get the two two afterwards. Skip. I don't want any of those. The desert by my side. All right, so we avalanche, and then we get the two two the next turn. I need more of those kind of cards, though. Less Preservariums. I need more, like, the deal one to everything. Ladder Ravine. Yeah, Ishar. There we go. Ishar, good. So... I kind of think I'm, I'm thinking about passing and not playing Preservarium. So I'll have seven mana next turn. If I pass, five if I play this. Um, so like basically, if I because if, if I play this, then with Ice Shard I'd only have two other mana. If I don't play with Ice Shard, I'll have four other mana, which are, you know kind of depends on what we draw. I guess I'll play it. No. I wish I didn't play it. Would have had Avalanche and Ice Shard. This. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, I guess playing that into Ice Shard doesn't make a lot of sense. If you attack, it's going to be nine. Because they have to kind of be worried about Avalanche or not. So now Azir levels up. So playing Sentry right now saves me two life. But then it dies, or I can play it after combat. Always forward. Azir's command. Remember this day. Ah. I was hoping they didn't attack with. Azir for some reason. Alright, so obviously I'm doing that. So that's going to put me down to 9 immediately. And then I either block here and go to 7 or block there and go to 6. I guess I just go to 6 instead of going to 7. But then, you know, we get two damage, two extra damage on this Azir.
So if I play Draclorn, we get the Draclorn in an 8-8, but by doing by playing the Talia. Talia should like make landmarks cost less whenever she levels up or something, or just like in general. Maybe like Talia should just also have like your landmarks cost one less. That could be something cool to like maybe buff up Talia a little bit. By doing this, we get an extra Frozen Thrall in play. So an act so for the Draclorn, we get that. Oh, doorbell just rang. I have the the lawn care people are coming today. I didn't quite mention that. Oh no, we may not actually get this game in. I may have to just concede this game. Yeah, well, looks like I'm going to lose anyway. Because, I mean, I, I do have, like, a Flash Freeze that I'll be able to play. But, okay. Yeah, looks like I'm... I guess I just lose this game. They didn't give me an opportunity to Avalanche, so... Yeah, we, we'd lose anyway. Okay. Alright, so I'll go take care of that. Okay. Be right back. Ooh, this is not going to be as good. Yeah, the last matchup, I feel like, I feel like that's like, you know, that, that was the one that we won it the first time. We lost it the second time. I think that's one that overall we're probably going to win more than 50%. We did, we didn't draw like, you know, necessarily the best. I only had like the one sweeper early. I think we, we need a lot more of those kind of things and early blockers and stuff, but we drew too many of the card draw and those kind of cards. For Zoe, I think I'll just mulligan both Troll Chance and keep these other two. Okay. I kind of want to pass because Ice Shard could be good against turn two Zoe. Like if they have Zoe attacking right here. Okay, but they did not. Or at least, if they did, they're really slow rolling me. Preservarium could be useful. Ooh. Lissandra, got some champions? But... We can't kill, like, an Aurelian soul, like... That's what our deck's missing. Like, how do we get rid of big stuff? That's really what our deck's missing. How do we get rid of big stuff? In shining sunlight. All things are probably, gonna ha probably gonna have Talia copy the Frozen Thrall. Gonna try this. <laughs> Hope it works. I could have blocked the 3 6 with the T2 just to get it out of here. Alright, cool. That's good. Do I want to wait to have Troll Chant available? No, nah, not really. You need to get these frozen thralls down ASAP, but I guess, I guess we can just wait because the fr that other frozen thrall is gonna count down and then it will just copy, so it'll be six. Yeah, so I guess there's not incentive to play it immediately because of that. What's up, Doctor Grendel? Hope you're doing good. Uh, I like that. I don't like that. If they're out there, I'll spot them. Unstoppable. Prove yourself. So loud.
Alright, not the best frozen thrall, but you know, I want to have this thing leveled up. Finally recovered from that storm last month. Yeah, that was a rough one. Speaking of a rough one. Because that means they just play like a really soul next turn. We're in a lot of trouble. That's fleeting. So I can't, you can't even like just play this first just to use some spell mana because it's fleeting. Yeah, they may want to keep the 7-7 seven, seven around for leveling up a really soul. And it's, it's not a very... You know, blocking with the 7-7 seven, seven that automatically takes... Damage isn't necessarily like the best block for that 7-7. Seven, seven. Hello, Runeterra. Let's rock. See, I, I, I played that deal two to everything so that I could kill the warrior so the warrior wouldn't kill my Talia. But... I need to play. I need to play Harsh Winds, but I also need to play Draclorn Inquisitor. So if I play Draclorn Inquisitor. Foolish child. It's a very greedy block, but they haven't played any kind of. Okay, as I said, they haven't played any kind of pump spell yet. Can't kill big things. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. Come, my warrior, show me your worth. I live and die for you alone, my lady. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. Could kill the 2-1. I'm just going to destroy a mana gem, though. But, of course, I would have rather protected against a Concerted Strike. And it looks like they have that also. Oh, gosh. Cosmic Inspiration? Yeah, I would have much rather countered that. And that just levels up the Aurelian Soul. And Yep. So like that that Azir loss, that's the kind of deck that we gotta be able to beat. You know, I, I went one and one. I I need to mulligan more against that Azir deck. That's the kind of deck that we gotta beat. Aurelian Soul is gonna go too big for us, and then the other deck had the four mana 10-10 Renekton. Like these 10-10 champions, that's our weakness, is 10-10 champions. And so unfortunately we played against two decks playing 10-10 champions. You will do as I command. Yeah, there's definitely enough land landmark destruction in the game right now, yes. Like how does how does these two regions deal with 10 10 champions? Like I That's what we definitely struggle with. Like I can entune, I guess. Stop. What? Why are you killing that thing? I feel like you should be killing the Draclorn Inquisitor. Look out for Reavers. That was odd. Let the 
I wanted my two one to deal damage first and then and then do this. Oh, stop. Um. Let's hit everything. I'm sorry for Resin Thrall, I'm not gonna have time for you. I really wish they didn't heal their Nexus for five. Yeah, if they if they didn't heal their Nexus for five, I would like our chances a lot more. But unfortunately they did. And fortunately they did, and unfortunately we can't win this. Next turn, they're going to get Aurelian Soul back, and they have infinite invoke cards in hand right now. I do love an audience. If they didn't have that star shaping, we would have put them down to zero. That could have been cool. Nothing escapes my watch. We we'll just have more star shapings. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what we need to do is just play towards you know, maybe we do just need to have a lot more in tombs and desert naturalists. Maybe that needs to be our way to deal with 10-10 champions, is, is Entomb Desert Naturalist, of just playing all those cards. Okay, for our last game here with the, the Talia Lissandra deck, we're going to switch up our deck a little bit. Because um, I think that, like, Entomb was just a card I kind of missed. I didn't have it in my collection. And, I, and, you know, when I was trying to think of, like, ways to get rid of the large stuff, I just didn't really think about Entomb. And so we're going to try that combo here for our last game to try to get rid of 10-10s. So we're going to play... Um, we're going to play in tombs, just, just normal in tomb, and we're going to play desert naturalist. So we'll be able to just have that combination of entomb their unit and then destroy their unit with the naturalist, where of course we can destroy our own landmark also with the naturalist. If we want uh, to get a five, four that can give this, this naturalist will give, um, cards like frozen thrall that frozen thrall is great on turn one, but you know how we don't like drawing frozen thrall on like turn 10, right? Cause then it just doesn't have time to count down eight. But then we can use a combo of just like play Frozen Thrall for one, play Naturalist, blow it up, make a 5-4, right? Like that could be more useful for our deck. So we're going to have Naturalist in here with Entombs uh, for that combo. And then we'll have two, three, we'll put a second three sisters in here. They can be an Entomb or just the other stuff. So we're taking out Ancient Preparations. That hasn't really looked that good. The 2-2 hasn't really mattered that much. Um, and it's just kind of, it. yeah, it hasn't looked that good. It has helped... Ancient Preparations has helped level up Talia, but that's about all it's done. So we're going to take that card out. We're going to take out... Um, let's see, I'm cutting Ride and Negation down from 2 to 1. We're taking out the Harsh Winds because we're using Entombs instead. And I think there was like one other card that was like a one of that we're not playing. Oh, um, Ancient Hourglass. We got rid of that card too. All right, so that... So that this this should be pretty interesting. I could I could see this this being pretty good of like our way to deal with larger stuff having entombs. So let's let's give it a try. All right, prediction started. Misfortune, Twisted Fate, with Shadow Isles. Usually, Twisted Fate with Shadow Isles means go hard. Does Misfortune mean go hard also? I'm not sure. Um, I don't think we need a second Lissandra right away, and we maybe probably don't need, like, the Entomb right away. Let's keep these two. So this should hopefully... Uh, yeah, I kind of like this, like, where we got... Yeah, I think I like what we have going on here. So, like, we still have, like, all of our sweepers to kill smaller things. But I had no way to deal with the big things, and now we have, like, the Entomb Naturalist combo to deal with big things. So this is exciting. 
By playing the Frozen Thrall, it does mean I'm not going to have Avalanche next turn. But having, especially with drawing the Draklorn, I want to have both of these in play immediately. The bold. Oh, I still can play Avalanche this turn. What am I saying? Okay, so if I Avalanche this turn, Misfortune deals damage to us. Um, should I wait till next? Should I play Lissandra and wait till next turn? Maybe I do that. I only, I only take one more damage by playing Lissandra right now. Oh well, we take less damage now. Pass. I don't think they just open attack. I mean, if they open attack, I control chant also. They probably play something here, though. No? Okay. Danger paid. Jell Hunters? I can dubs. Double up these avalanches. Let's try this. Hell of a day. Not bad. I was like, they're playing Sea Scarab? Oh yeah, Warden Spray made it. Okay, never mind. Come on, there's so much to and again, right, like we want to play this Talia to get another um thrall that's you know almost leveled up before like if we just play draclorn yeah we get eight eights but now we can get like another eight eight by playing that so like we can get like four eight eights next turn by playing like the draclorn but i guess we'd have to like play that over a talia we'd have to like take <laughs> kill the talia and then we get the watcher and level up the watcher immediately basically by the end of the next turn Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry, Talia, but I mean, we're we're gonna get four eight eights in the Watcher. Hey there, don't mind the knife. I think I pass. I am planning on playing Avalanche, but I don't. I don't think they just pass back to me, do they? And just let these Watchers all go down, or like let all these things go down. I don't think they pass. I think they got to play something. No. No. Alright, well. Alright, so we got two options. We can either entomb that thing or we go Fury of the North. If I play Fury of the North, I have let's see, so we have ten total mana right now. Or no, we're playing this, so we're gonna have nine mana. So we're gonna have nine mana. I need to play this thing, so nine mana means I need Fury of the North. Sorry, Talia. Show me your worth. This is going to be crazy, though. I live and die for you alone, my lady. Open wide, sugar. I guess I could block the one power with that, but whatever. Alright, so they're going to draw all their cards before their deck goes away. But leveled up Twisted Fate, not good against the Watcher. You will do as I command. <laughs> okay, this game is awesome. Embrace the calm. Dang. This is how we drew it up. This is how we drew it up. Putting 35 power into play this turn. And also attack, obliterate your deck. Because why not that too?
The Neverglade Collector will drain, but our Nexus is kind of tough. Our Nexus can handle it. <laughs> oh no! We, we ran into a trap. We obliterated their deck, but... Oh, they didn't block. I guess they did. <laughs> that was cool. All right, so that's that's Talia Lissandra. I think that this deck, I'm I'm pretty excited about this deck moving forward. Um, you know, we just played our five games here, but I'd be pretty excited about playing another five games because I was kind of I was kind of down on it, like after the first couple of like, man, how do we deal with these ten power champions? But I think that that could be like the the answer in Tomb Naturalist combo. I'm pretty excited about that. After that, um, our our last game was kind of weird, but you know, we got to really pull off. Our uh, four Frozen Thralls, same uh, same turn. Uh, you know, Dark Draclorn, uh, you know, just having them all advance to zero was awesome. And, you know, Talia, copy one. That was that was a pretty pretty crazy last game. But uh, in general, I, I'm more excited about this version, you know, moving forward. I'll change the deck list to be this version. Um, anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> I, I would be excited about playing this one going forward. And so, like, those of y'all watching later on YouTube... Try this deck out and let me know how it goes. Like I want to hear, I want to hear like y'all's thought on this newer version with Entomb, Desert Naturalist, and stuff. Um, you know, like we we got other decks to get to, but I kind of wish I would just play five games with this version. So that you know that does mean that I'll, I'll come back to this right. Like in a few days, I'll come back to this deck and replay this deck with this version and try this version out. Um, but I think yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about it. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Talia Lissandra. Um, so again, those of y'all on YouTube, let me know about it. Hit that like button over there. I would appreciate that. Hopefully y'all liked this video. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next one.